It's Melissa, the M of the MNH of Bisco Care Styles. Hope you're well. Um, I've done a posting about my hair, um, how I achieve this color, and I will put the link if you like this color. Um, it is an option for those who ha are um, allergic to any of the natural hair coloring um, products out there. Or somebody doesn't really want to put products on their hair, just wants the hair in color for a short time. Um, watch that posting and um, get in touch if you're in the UK. And if you're not, then try and find somebody who can install the thread work into your hair safely. That's what I would say. Um, but this posting is just me telling a story about my salon experience. Uh, and maybe it will give you a better understanding of why we work in the way we do. And um, yeah, let's let me just tell you this story. Right. OK. So this was one of the last times I ever went into a salon. This salon was heavily recommended to me. I'm the sort of person who when I want my hair, when I wanted my hair weaved, um, when I wanted my hair styled, whatever I wanted, I would research and I would open the magazines and I would go with with whichever pictures I liked and recommended by the magazines. That's what I was like. Um, and I um, also would go by word of mouth recommendation. So uh, my friend had gone to this um, salon and many times, I mean, she did have permed hair. That should have been a warning for me. But many times um, she had rated them. So I went there uh, with quite high expectations. OK, so went to the salon with a news, with a magazine, um, showing my hair colour, that I wanted to colour my hair. Um, and um, I took the magazine. Oh, actually, uh, is it my fault? <laughs> One of the jokes is about is about my hair colour experience. Right, so I'll put that link as well for you to see that joke. OK. Um, or for you to see the video, because it's quite funny, even if I say so myself. Um, so I took the magazine um, and went to the shop, the salon, and asked for this specific person. And this person was working on somebody's hair or wasn't available. So um, I thought, well, as it's a good salon, I can go with the next option, which is that person who specializes in colouring. So she then looked at the magazine and went, yes, that's deep copper. D deep, deep copper. That's and I was like, OK, I don't care the name. I don't care about the name of it. Just in my head, I was like, just look at the colour and that's what I want. <laughs> okay. So she went on to get me to wait, which was a long wait. And then finally she got to me and she didn't explain anything um, to me what she was doing. And, and this is probably something that I think um, is missing in the salon service. At least tell me, like, I'm about to strip the colour of your hair. Do you want me to do that or not? Uh, instead of just doing it. So she went and basically she stripped the colour and basically, I'm a natural, right? So it's Afro hair, blonde, white, white. And then she went on to think it was maybe too white or something. And then she slightly dark blonded it. So I was with yellow hair, blonde. And then she then put me on the dryer and then coloured my hair with um, orangey colour or a coppery colour, she would say. But when it was a long day uh, and, and it was all a blur, it was so traumatic, I can't remember every detail. So, um, but um, all I remember is people coming in the shop, uh, people asking what's going on with the noise. And I think she was like, my hair was under a hairdryer and natural hair and the oils and all that. And so there was smoke in there and in, in the shop. And then she then um, had a conversation with many people, many of her friends, um, about my hair and uh, what I was trying to do with it. And then they had conversations about why my hair was white, uh, why my hair was turning this colour, why literally a conversation over me, okay? Then finally, she checked my hair, put me under the dryer for many, many times, and then checked my hair. And then I saw the colour and I went, no, it needs to be darker. But I said it needs to be dark in a very calm way, but actually I was like, oh my God, oh my God, like swearing inside. I was like, oh no, she's ruined my hair, okay? And then... Because I needed to leave the shop with a colour, I allowed her to darken the colour. <laughs> but I looked at myself in the mirror and I just, you know when you're looking at yourself and you've got a normal expression, but you're crying because I have to go to work. 
um, that was a Saturday, I have to go to work on a Monday, and she asked me, uh, how is it? And I, I have a phobia with salon, so I just went, yes, thank you. <laughs> and, I, and I paid her, and I left. And this was, um, for UKers, this is like near Peckham, like this is East Street Market, Elephant and Castle Way. So I had to get into my car, because I had to walk from the shop with my, I didn't have a head tie, I didn't have a head tie. I had a band. You know when you have your afro and you have a little band to collect it and then it's puffy out? That's how I entered the shop. So I had to go out with a band from the shop to my car. And it was such a long walk. I mean, it wasn't far, but it was such a long walk because it is East Street Market, like East Street area. People know about hair. You can't, like, pretend it's not what it is. Rubbish. So I got into my car and I drove from, it took about two minutes, but it felt like the longest drive. And people were staring at me. And I was just like, why can't I have a good, positive salon experience? I just don't get it. Drove home and I was like, okay, I'm home. Okay, we lived in flats at the time, myself and my husband, now husband, but he was my boyfriend then, new boyfriend as well. And he looked down and all I'm sure, all he could see was orange, because my hair was orange like the fruit, orange. And he shouted, don't come, <laughs> don't come here with the orange fire, don't come here with the, and can you imagine the humiliation, the disgrace I felt? So that evening, I basically had to, I tried one dark and lovely, that didn't work. I tried another duck. I just went for brown colours. I covered my head, went to the shop and started, like, literally any colour, just dark colours, something was black. It wasn't black because I didn't want it to be too severe. And eventually, I think, henna I used, and it darkened the colour of my hair, and that was it. That was it. I was like, that's it. I give up. From now on. And so that's, I guess the point is, that's when I started colouring my hair uh, from home, basically, because I thought, if a salon can't give you the colour that you want, you, you just might might as well colour your hair at home. And um, this leads me on to a, a, another point, which is that naturals, us, I put myself in that category, naturals are used to DIYing, doing our hair ourselves. And the reason is because when we go out there to get a hair styled or done up, it's not done Right, or it's not done with communication, and um, we accept that there are clients who sometimes are stylists when we style their hair. Even though we're explaining things, they're probably thinking, why are they talking so much or whatever it is, because we want you to hear us. And we accept that there are some times that, as clients, you might not hear or understand what we're doing. But we, to be focused on that is communicating with you, even if we might not necessarily agree with what the, your choice, we'll explain why we think it's better for you to go and try out a different choice. Um, and that's why this book here starts exists, because basically we feel like when you go to a public space, you're not heard, and hopefully you will hear, we're not perfect, we're trying, but hopefully we'll hear you better in a quiet, private space like this. So I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, my traumatic experience of hair colour in a salon. Hope you enjoyed this posting. Stay connected, everyone. Take care. Bye. Ah, well, Mono Safel SK, all 